Nothing was wrong with him. However, the caseworker told the probation officer he needed to be detained so that a uh, credible person could come pick up our son or he was going to go to foster care. My mom was able to, to take our son. Secret how to fight child protective services and when. And I'm joined by my guest host, Cynthia Becker. Cynthia, are you there? I'm here. Can you not hear me? I can hear you now, loud and clear. Oh, I was, I've been here. Okay. So, what's going on this evening? Well, we have a uh, special guest. Um, it is attorney Connie Reguli from Tennessee. Connie, are you there with us? Yes, I am. I'm here. I'm so excited to have you on our show. How are you doing tonight? Oh, I'm doing well. I'm in Middle Tennessee, and we've been through the middle of an ice storm uh, this week. So everybody's been kind of stuck at home. I think we're going to come through it tomorrow, and everything's going to melt away. So we'll be back to business by Monday. But it's been a pretty uh, interesting week here. Wow. Well, I'm... uh... Sorry to hear that, I guess, but maybe uh, some downtime is nice. So let me explain how we do this. We take calls and we answer questions from our callers that um, most of them have CPS cases. And I will have you and Mr. Davis answer them. How does that sound? Oh, that's great. Okay, so let's take our first call, Vince. Okay, it's going to be JJ from California. JJ. Did you have a story to tell or a question to ask? Um, I have two questions to ask, and I'll just give you a a brief um, background uh, momentarily because I'm sure you have other um, parents waiting who would like questions asked as well. I hope everyone's doing well this evening, Connie, Cynthia, Vincent, and your uh, technical staff. Um, Yes, my question is, uh, in July of last year, 2020, um, uh, our caseworker had lied to my probation officer Um, I went to uh, jail for failure to check in, and um, the father, he didn't go to jail or anything. There was nothing found. Nothing was wrong with him. However, the caseworker told the probation officer he needed to be detained so that a uh, credible person could come pick up our son or he was going to go to foster care. My mom was able to, to take our son, which was against his father's and my wishes, but regardless, we'd rather have him been with her than in a foster home. And he had resided with her up until yesterday afternoon. Um, in the last, I don't know, nine addendums, ad- 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 um, out of, you know, 11 to 8 page reports, maybe a page and a half, two pages tops are about the father and myself and our son. And the rest of the pages are all about my mother and her lack of cooperation, her questioning uh, the department because of the actual evidence that I finally was able to get from the hospital report and stuff, all saying that, you know, toxicology reports came back that my system was clean. Um, Long story short, two questions that I I have. One is I have been testing for the department consecutively for the the last two months. Um, In November, I missed three tests because I came to test and due to COVID-19 concerns and them wanting to protect their staff, I was turned away from testing. I wasn't allowed to test. I wasn't allowed to provide any sample, um, regardless uh, of me, you know, wanting to be in uh, cooperation with the department's request. Um, I still went out of my way, contact my probation officer who was willing to test me at um, his department. But regardless, the court won't look at that. They still look at it. Oh, like you missed three tests in November. And I'm like, well, that has nothing to do with me. The depart or your testing facility turned me away on purpose. Um, so I've been testing consecutively, and um, it was about I don't know four weeks, five, six weeks ago. Um, I've always had problems with this one girl who tests me. Um, only when she tests me, my uh, UA samples come back 92, 94. Everyone else tests me, it's at 98. And I believe the first uh, 92, 94 was recorded back in September or, or October. When I went to go test on the 3rd or the 5th of February, 
they wanted to do a mouth swab. And I was thrown off, off guard because I had been testing consecutively. Everything had came back negative, And under no time at all had I ever heard from the judge, nor in the contract that I signed with the testing facility, ever stated that, you know, upon us as the testing facility, should we find suspicion that you may be altering your samples of some sort, we have the authority to request a mouth swabbing from you without the department's knowledge, contact, asking them, whatever. Well, being that I was going by the contract I had signed, the judge's order saying I had to provide testing, UA samples is what he had directed, not specifically, but anytime we had talked about it in court, it was like, you no know, diluted, make sure you don't miss any tests, you know, as long as you're providing UA samples. Um, so I denied giving a mouth swab because their suspicion was I come at the end of the day because I'm in school and I have a job, I come at the end of the day every single week by 4, 30, 5 o'clock. Second one is because I wear dark clothing, which in my book at school, it says dark colors are the best. We dress professionally, suits and stuff. It's not like I'm just wearing black pants and a black shirt. I'm dressed in really nice suits and skirts like I'm going to court every day for my school. And um, the third suspicion was because my UA samples are between 92 and 94 degrees recently, which they've been like that since October. Um, so I denied testing and I felt like I was in right being the fact that it wasn't stated in the actual contract. And because my mom backed me up on that, now they took away my son from her care. And my question being is, was I right to stand by the contract that I signed with the testing facility? And then the, the courts never stating specifically a mouth swab or the contract I signed with the testing facility, they wanted a mouth swab because usually I would just... JJ, sit. let me answer that question, okay? Yes. I'm going to have one of the best CPS attorneys in the country. She's from Tennessee. Connie, how would you answer that question under Tennessee, you know, law? You and I'm really happy and proud to be with you on the phone. I have a lot of respect for you, and and I'm happy to be here. I just want you to know that. And and I'm just going to say, you know, um, this whole drug test testing thing is like driving me crazy. It is driving me crazy. I just went through where we had to get an expert uh, because the Aver Health system, which is now gone, which is now a nationwide system. I mean, they are, they, if you look them up, it's like they're not meeting. And, and the problem is, is even these caseworkers are not very well trained with it. One of the things that I just, I'm trying to get, if I get in with a client fairly early, I say one of your best defenses in any CPS case is you asking questions. Okay. So, and, and you go into these cases and you assume a lot of things. You assume professional. You assume they're going to do a chain of custody. You assume you assume they're going to confirm their their drug testing because it just seems like in your mind when you when you when you find out you're going to have to be part of drug testing or something, you kind of think in your head that maybe the people who are responsible for conducting this and doing this part of of, of my requirements are going to be professional and and we cannot you cannot in any in the middle of any cps case assume anybody on the other side is competent i would just and vincent don't you agree with me on that I, you know what connie i agree with you 110 percent you know um so you, you know these so drug, so, these drug yeah, testing so, things drive me crazy as well you know, you got yeah. the you got the urine test, you got the the patch test, you got the hair mm -hmm. follicle. I'm just waiting for them to try to do the uh, the blood test on these people. Uh, forget about oh, privacy. Yeah, yeah, and they do cuticle here and 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 so, and, and never once parents. ever have I ever given a dirty test ever since uh, since right. July. There's never of been course. a dirty test. Hey JJ, I want of you to course. do me a favor. Do me a favor, JJ. Yeah. Take down my telephone number, 888-888-6582. Give me a call tomorrow. Make an appointment to talk to me. I'm going to chat with you more about this situation because you are up in uh, California. 
And I'm licensed in California, and I can give you some more information about that. Hey, JJ, I want to thank you for calling. Thank you for listening. And we have to take our first break here to pay some bills. So stand by. We'll be back with more calls, more questions, and more stories. 